Skip this postscript if you don't want your sensibilities all wrought up. Poor old Grove is dead. He got so that he couldn't chew and they had to shoot him. Nine chickens were killed by a weasel or a skunk or a rat last week. One of the cows is sick, and we had to have the veterinary surgeon out from Bonaric Four Corners. Almost I stayed up all night to give her linseed oil and whiskey. But we have an awful suspicion that the poor sick cow got nothing but linseed oil. Sentimental Tommy, the tortoise shell cat, has disappeared. We are afraid he has been caught in a trap. There are all lots of troubles in the world. Seventeenth, May, dear Daddy Long Legs. This is going to be extremely short because my shoulder aches at the sight of a pen. Lecture notes all day, a mortal novel all evening, make too much writing. Commencement three weeks from next Wednesday. I think you might come and make my acquaintance. I shall hate you if you don't. Julia's inviting Master Jervy, he being her family, and Sally's inviting Jimmy Mab, he being her family, but who is there for me to invite? Just you and Lippet, and I don't want her. Please come. Yours, with love and writer's cramp, Judy. Lock Willow, 19th, June, Dear Daddy Long Legs. I'm educated. My diploma is in the bottom bureau drawer with my two best dresses. Commencement was as usual with a few showers at vital moments. Thank you for your rosebuds. They were lovely. Master Jervy and Master Jimmy both gave me roses too, but I left theirs in the bathtub and carried yours in the class procession. Here I am at Lock Willow for the summer, forever maybe. The board is cheap. The surroundings quiet and conducive to a literary life. What more does a struggling author wish? I am mad about my book. I think of it every waking moment and dream of it at night.
All I want is peace and quiet and lots of time to work, interspersed with nourishing meals. Master Jervy is coming up for a week or so in August, and Jimmy McBride is going to drop in sometime through the summer. He's connected with a bond house now and goes about the country selling bonds to banks. He's going to combine the Farmers National at the Corners and me on the same trip. You see that Lock Willow isn't entirely lacking in society. I'd be expecting to have you come motoring through, only I know now that that is hopeless. When you wouldn't come to my commencement, I tore you from my heart and buried you forever. Judy Abbott, A. B. Twenty fourth, July, dearest Daddy Long Legs. Isn't it fun to work, or don't you ever do it? It's especially fun when your kind of work is the thing you'd rather do more than anything else in the world. I've been writing as fast as my pen would go every day, this summer, and my only quarrel. With life is that the days aren't long enough to write all the beautiful and valuable and entertaining thoughts I'm thinking. I've finished the second draft of my book and am going to begin the third tomorrow morning at half past seven. It's the sweetest book you ever saw. It is truly. I think of nothing else. I can barely wait in the morning to dress and eat before beginning. Then I write and write and write till suddenly I'm so tired that I'm limp all over. Then I go out with Colin, the new sheepdog, and romp through the fields and get a fresh supply of ideas for the next day. It's the most beautiful book you ever saw. Oh, pardon. I said that before. You don't think me conceited, do you, Daddy dear? I'm not. Really only just now I'm in the enthusiastic stage. Maybe later on I'll get cold and critical and sniffy. No, I'm sure I won't. This time I've written a real book. Just wait till you see it. I'll try for a minute to talk about something else.